ಕರುಣಾರ್ಣವಮಾಯ್ ಕರುದಗ್ಗತಿ ನಲ್ಗು ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಶಿವ ನಮಸ್ತೆ So today we're going to continue with the discussion on the yoga of death. <laughs> yoga of death is actually the yoga of life. There is really no difference between the eight steps of the yoga process and the natural process of leaving the body that occurs at death. The only difference really is that when we do it as a yoga we do it on our own initiative on our own will but most people get to go through these stages kicking screaming clinging to the body clinging to the mind and because of that they have to take another birth now i don't know about you <laughs> but i'm want out of here <laughs> this is not a nice place i mean actually the material world is beautifully designed you know there's a lot of good in it there's a lot that you can appreciate in it and even a a lot of beauty in it but let's be honest there's also ugliness violence i mean just look at how animals behave and hunt one another and stuff like this and then there's people oi don't get me started <laughs> so even though this world has a potential to be a wonderful place it's ruined by people mainly isn't it so at the very least we should want to go to a higher level a higher planet where people are self-realized where they're kinder more intelligent their senses and minds are controlled not like this place where people act like animals actually animals probably act better <laughs> people are vicious man so anybody who's been on the internet and especially tried to discuss anything important on the internet knows that this world is full of really vicious people who just like to rain on your parade <laughs> anyway we don't need to belabor this point everybody knows already so the point is how do we get out of this well we've gone through the buddha's teaching and before that existentialism pointing out the nature and severity of the problem the critical situation and then after that we went through various different levels of spiritual practices according to the four views which we've gone over so many times if you've been following this channel for more than a week <laughs> you've probably seen this chart of the four views now if you're not familiar with it stop the video pause the video right now and give it a good looking over because this is the terminology and the structure of the states of consciousness that one develops along the path as the chakras become ripe then one moves up the scale until finally he hits the vivartavada and that's actually the level of yoga don't believe people who talk about yoga as a system of physical exercises that is frankly bullshit i was reading patanjali's yoga sutras last night it's actually the first time i've looked at them in many years and i have a program where i can load a book in and do a search so i said just for the heck of it let's search asanas huh because most people think of yoga as the asanas the different sitting positions and exercises and stuff so in this whole long book of four chapters four big chapters of many sanskrit verses the word asana appears 
exactly twice. So asanas are a very, very small part of the yoga teaching. Really, asana means sitting. Now, everybody in India knows how to sit. Huh? Because every child learns at a very young age how to sit in a cross-legged position. Anytime you go to a temple, you know, there are no chairs. <laughs> what are you going to do? You have to sit on the floor. So you learn how to do asanas very quickly in India. That's it. You don't need any more. As soon as you can sit comfortably in a cross-legged position with the spine straight and the head erect, that's it. That's asana. Finished. Now you go on to the next stage. But we see people get hung up on these asanas I don't know, their whole lives, some of them. Why? Well, it's their mentality and because of lack of training and education in real yoga. So the goal of actual yoga is to stop the mind. Ramana Maharshi taught about this elaborately in any of his books you can read in hundreds and hundreds of explanations about how to stop the mind. But actually, it's very simple. Not easy, but simple. First of all, watch your thoughts. Every single thought starts from the thought, I. Isn't it? I am seeing this. I am hearing that. I am feeling a certain sensation in my body. I am smelling, I am tasting, uh, or even I think, this is a big one, right? I think this, I think that, this is my opinion, blah, 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 blah. The mind goes on and on, chattering and jumping like a monkey. This is the nature of the mind. But there is one thing in common with all these thoughts, they're centered around the thought, I. So watch the mind. Huh? You know, you ever see a bear fish? Bears like to fish when the salmon are jumping upstream. And they simply watch. They don't do anything for a long time. They sit and watch. And then suddenly, meow, they grab a fish. <laughs> so <laughs> cats are like that too. What's the meaning? We have to watch the thoughts in the mind until we discern where they're coming from. They're coming from the thought, I. So if we go and find that thought and then grab onto it, huh? like the bear catching the fish, grab onto that thought, I, and hold it. Now, what's gonna happen? Just like when you catch a fish, <laughs> it's going to flip flop and try to get away and go through all kinds of, of motions and actions and this and that. You have to hang on tight to that thought, I. And after a while, after some time, the mind begins to quiet down. This morning I woke up a little before three o'clock and I actually did this, and I experienced a very good simile. Imagine you're in a windstorm, heavy winds like a hurricane, and you come to a big tree, huh? and you get under the canopy of the tree, but the wind's still very strong. It feels like it's gonna blow you away any second. Then you finally, you come to the trunk of the tree, the solid, strong, thick wood of the trunk is a shelter. And you grab onto this trunk. Huh? You hold onto this trunk. And then gradually, the branches are, you know, s s are moving. Actually, the branches are causing the wind. <laughs> but as you hold onto the trunk, the branches gradually stop moving and they finally remain still. 
It takes a while. You have to be persistent. And you have to use the breath. This is pranayama. Pranayama means not breathing forcefully or in some numeric pattern. I don't know where this nonsense comes from. It's not in Patanjali, that's for sure. But allow the breath to settle and relax and become still. So the breath should be kept as still as possible. And this will reduce the, the wind uh, thrashing the branches of the tree of the mind. So hold on, hold on to that thought I and let the breath settle and gradually the turbulence of the mind will subside. Just like when the wind stops and becomes calm, the ocean waves gradually disappear and all that's left is a clean, flat sea. So then what? Well, you just keep holding on to that thought of I. And after some time, we can't say how long because it's always different. Something will happen. That thought of I will disappear. And along with it, the whole tree will disappear. The whole mind. And you are left alone. You can call this the self. You can call it the heart. You can call it Brahman. You can call it the void, Shunya. Huh? Whatever you call it, <laughs> it is being without mind. Pure consciousness, without an object. Awareness of awareness. Now, this is the state in which self-realization occurs. Well, it is self-realization. So this is the state to which all the scriptures point. Now, if you can't do this yoga, which actually is absurd, anybody can do it, but if for some reason you're unable to do it, next best thing is to chant the mantras. These mantras are applied according to your preferences. You can worship any form of God. Ganapati or Vishnu or Shiva or the mother and all of them have innumerable subforms and many, many mantras that are direct those. Or you can even you can worship the Buddha this way or Jesus or Satan or whoever you whoever you're attached to. With this mantra, the mind becomes one pointed. And that will eventually qualify you to do the highest yoga. And if you can't do that, do acts of charity and kindness. Feed people. Huh? Every month on the, on the Dwadashi day of the rising moon, I feed the sadhus here in Tiruvannamalai. I've been doing this for some time. I usually don't say anything about it, but this is an example. Huh? Feed people, that's the best charity. And if you feed people in a holy place, that's even better. And of course, Tiruvannamalai is the best holy place. So <laughs> if you want to, do uh, millions of times more good in the world and get more benefit than feed the sadhus in Tiruvannamalai. And if you want to know how to do that, write me and I'll uh, give you some directions. It's not send money to me. I, I don't take uh, donations. I don't need them. But uh, there are several places you can send money that will give the same benefit. So, you know, if you can be a good person and just be self-situated, not get involved with any groups or cliques or cults, huh? but just study the scriptures, do some prayers and mantras, 
do some ceremonies like arities and offerings and like that. And then gradually start sitting in meditation. Then you can ward off all fear of death. Why is that? Because you've been through it already. You know it. You're familiar with it. You know that it doesn't hurt. The only suffering from death is due to our attachments to the body, to the mind, to all these phony designations that we have, that we identify with or project. So if we can let these go before the time of death, purify ourselves and get ourselves in shape, get ready for it, then our death can be as beautiful as the death of my guru that I talked about in the previous episode. So please do these practices, prepare yourself, huh? be responsible for yourself, take care of yourself, try to stay in good health, and let go of all these false things. Then you will have an easy death, a pleasant death, a beautiful death, and go on to higher realms of the universe and eventually attain pure, full self-realization. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum.